Hello, my name is Dr. George Machaki and welcome to our Retail Merchandising Controls and Report Analysis. This is, what we, this is Chapter 15. You're taking me in an online class or face-to-face -face class. This is a supplement to the lecture or the discussion that we had within the class, within a forum or in the, uh, in the classroom. Uh, you have access to my concept maps or mind maps at the second tier. Please print them out. Uh, they're in a PDF file, so anyone could open them up, uh, uh, print them out, and when you read the book the, from the author, read the book, and then you basically add on to it, and then later on after you've read it, then uh, you'll view this uh, recording or discuss it in our forums or in our uh, lectures, and this is how you will learn the material and you are encompassed with information from all different sides okay so now let's go forward so make sure you read the material everything else uh, open up the concept maps you only have this chapter one more chapter remember the last few chapters everything had to deal with inventory pricing everything to do with the accounting with the, the dollars now you understand conceptually I know it's a little overwhelming for some of you um, if you haven't had any kind of accounting classes or uh, of, uh, finance classes so it's a little hard but it's not that hard you have to understand conceptually what's going on with the money side yeah, and we do that uh, now anyway I'm just put placing labels and showing you different ways of looking at it from a retail merchandising perspective you have a lot of goods a lot of different merchandising you have to categorize them you have to know the inventory you have to know when to buy them you have to know how to move them you have to know how to position them properly next the last chapter we're going to have chapter 16 after this chapter is how do I lay out the store what's the position different types of hangers different ways uh, when people come in that's going to be your capstone but all that is all dependent on how much revenue or how much profitability or gross margin which is my profit after uh, I, I, I paid for everything else how much do I keep so I could reinvest in the business or in the operation or do I you know uh, give raises to my employees or basically uh, provide me with additional disposable income for my uh, work you know you do all this work as a retail merchandiser or a manager you want to reap something in return not only for the organization or for your business but also for your own personal um, satisfaction the business personal satisfaction is nice to have some additional capital to enjoy the, the things of life since you've been working hard for it all right so let's go we're gonna go this now you you had all that we talked about the different accounting we talked about everything else I'm just gonna go overview real quickly now you have the reports and what you're gonna find out that computers will generate a lot of reports now you have to look at reports that have two aspects to it one is a report that has a lot of data 25 pages what the heck does that mean the data is irrelevant to me unless I could take the data categorize it and come up with some kind of graph come up with some kind of report that tells me this data says that my prices are too high this data says that I'm losing money this data is telling me you know because I got all the inventory because I have a lot of data so now it's compiling it and it's going to give me what we would call a report and how do I read the report so we're going to talk about different all these you know uh, stock to uh, uh, inventory inventory turnover uh, penetration pricing all these reports are here and now that I understand how the report was generated I could look at the report and now I can make uh, uh, decisions on which way the direction of my product mix or my merchandising should be going this is what we call finance and finances you know so you're doing accounting and finance finances accounting gives me the raw data that's what you've come up with all this uh, uh, controls and reports and now finances how do I uh, uh, change the number tied in with managerial accounting which is looking at my process okay what could I change if I could uh, eliminate this distributor or eliminate this transportation cost but replace it with another one just as effective and reduces my costs of goods by two dollars that's two more dollars I could re reduce the prices of my goods to my customer which makes me more competitive yeah I don't have to give them the two dollars give them one and also keep the other dollar for myself and 50 cents for my uh, uh, profits 
you know, so I give pay back to the to my uh, to my uh, business, to my uh, partners, to my investors, and the other fifty cents retained earning. You see how you're looking. So I've got this dollar, and how do I break up this dollar? Even though I say it's only a dollar, I put so much away from here, I put so much away from here, from advantage, but some I got to give back to myself, or what? What the? What's the uh, means of working? And you can't enjoy some of the fruit of your uh, uh, your work okay so let's look about the control process all right so I've got this at 200 I'm always going to try to be under uh, what do you call it one hour you can always fast forward me the whole thing you're doing you read the book you, the author did a great job he gets into more details on these uh, reports I'm just going to generally just let you know that they're out there and which report is more vital to your operation than others sometimes some of the reports are there it's nice to know what my categories are but that's not uh, but there's no issue there so I just glance at to make sure uh, uh, what I have is an exceptional report with good Lord this one that hey this is way way out of the norm you should take a look at this before it gets to be a critical stage Okay, so control process includes, what does include? Let's see what we have here. Establishing goals and standards. We already did that. That's what the control, I have a goal, I have a standard, so I'm benchmarking against something. I want to make sure that it's all uh, uniform. It's all the same. So when a customer gets my product or merchandise, it's exactly what I reported it or uh, was selling it to him. And this, you know, So my contractual agreement with that customer is uh, uh, fulfilled. Measuring deviation between performance and standards, and we'll talk about deviation, and that means, okay, so uh, how much is it different? You know, if my standard is I only could have 2% uh, return, I'm getting 5%, so there's a deviation of uh, two per, uh, 3%. How do I find what's causing that deviation? Because i got to be back to the standard. It's almost a, uh, it's like you look at your gas mileage. Your gas mileage is supposed to be in your car, it's supposed to be getting 30, 30 miles to a gallon or 35 miles to a gallon. It's an average now, even for the uh, gas guzzlers. You know, that's not bad. Uh, you know, 35 miles to a gallon and you're only getting 20. That's a deviation. Wait a minute. I should be getting 30 or 35, I'm only getting 20. I'm losing 10 gallons. What's wrong? Maybe I need a tuna. Maybe something's misfiring. Maybe something's not working right. It's still running. I don't notice it, but that deviation is already a signal. There may be something down the road that's going to be a domino effect, so I want to resolve it now. So that's what your standards are. And I try to tie it in to what you will relate to as an individual. And now businesses are doing this on each product line, each category, and looking at the, or at the whole product mix of their uh, retail merchandising store. Okay? And so reacting to the de deviations, that's what I talked about, and the control, measuring against actual performance, against goals and standards. I got to have standards. Look, your first year is kind of hard if you open up your business for those who are entrepreneurs because you don't have any historical data to base it on. So you have to look at your controls and everything else. Your baseline would be with the best in the industry so, or, or mediocre. So you look at here's the best. I'm not there. I just started off. So I'm going to be with the me mediocre. Let's say uh, uh, Nemus Marcus or, or uh, is the number one and J.C. Penney's in the middle. I want to be like that one. But right now I'm starting off. So I'm going to look at my benchmarking at JC Penny. It doesn't make sense to go right to the best. Sure, I want to be there, but wait, I'm right over here. I'm just opening up a store. I barely got any furniture. I barely got any uh, inventory. How can I compare to them? So let's go up and benchmark. Now, after, you know, or someone that's similar in your category, you could find some information on there. Now that you've got the benchmark, after the first year, now you'll have two marks. You'll have, here's where I am. I want to improve to get to this goal. This is where my competitor is at. And then once I reach that goal, then I'll go to the next level. You see, so you're still using the hierarchy you're looking at. Be realistic. You know, if I'm a runner, I can't compete with the Olympics. I could, but, you know, I'm not that good. So what would happen? I'd go to the next one. I'd go to my category, and then i go to the next category. And then you finally get to where you're at that level where I'm at the, uh, competing at the Olympics because I beat all those other. I achieved those other categories, those benchmarks, and by achieving them, I got better, better, more effective, more efficient. And that's what the controls and report. You cannot get away with it. You can't just say everything is okay. Uh, you have to look at the report. They're like indicators. They're like a forecasting. It's like when you look at the weather. I'm going to the beach. What kind of jacket? You're looking at the report. Here's the weather report. They're taking their best gamble. It hasn't happened yet, but they can see the trends, the movement. This is what's going on. And that's what you're doing. That's what your report, your deviations are, will be uh, telling you. Okay? 
and you have to change those goals. Don't wait till the year end. You want your year and your year end goals to be achievable, but you get there by monthly by little steps to there. So if one month I uh, was supposed to have five percent sales on my inventory, I only got three. I better make it up the next month. I got to think of something, promotion, something to bring up that number. If that is a critical goal, goal for me for sustaining my operation. Uh, you know, I'm really stressing this with the reports because they're out there. It's not like you have to uh, uh, create them. A lot of software, QuickBooks, or there's uh, uh, individuals that come in there. Your accountant will help you with a lot of some of the reports. Uh, uh, QuickBooks uh, has reports, your point of uh, 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 purchase, POP, point of purchase. The vendor there will give you, help you report. Your vendors has reports. They're already running reports on you. Ask them for, hey, how's my store doing compared to some of the other ones? You have to give me the stores. You know, and they're always going to say, well, you don't have much sales. How do I improve, uh, improve it? You have your suppliers. You have so much information. You have the government. There's reports. There's data out there. Now you have to take that and comp you could hire a consultant to do it. A lot of small business, you should be able to know yourself. You just only, you know, because once you know which report is uh, uh, critical to your business, uh, merchandising uh, inventory or to your operation then it kind of makes sense a lot of corporations or uh, businesses if you work in a department head you'll see your report you're judged against different departments in different towns and different segments that's similar to yours and you want to be the bet number one that's where you get your promotions that's where you get your raises as a business that's where your business grows that's where investors will invest because they see that you're very profitable okay so let's look at deviation and some of you would have had algebra or some you know basic algebra or uh, uh, statistics Statistics are very uh, uh, heavy into uh, deviation. You know, uh, your, your norm uh, is it acceptable? What are your outliners? Okay, what's your medium mean? So when I'm looking at deviation, all deviation is a discrepancy between the actual performance, like I mentioned with your car mileage, and the standard. Here's my standard. Remember the standards, give or take. You know, if you're only one mile off, you know your gas mileage is 30, and you got 29, oof, or 30. That could be idling or you know the conditions. Don't worry about that. I'm looking at the larger deviant the exception you know 10 percent off or to, you know i'm off 15 miles per gallon there's a big something's going on there okay deviation can either be positive or negative percentage of the deviation so i get the amount of deviation times 100 because i'm always in the percentage divided by the standard whatever my baseline is okay now types of control standard now you have internal that kind of makes sense that's inside you have control standards are reference points or benchmarks or plans. Remember my control stand, I have a strategic plan. Where's the organization going in the future? Where's my product going? What's my uh, my uh, uh, major goals or objectives for this year and to meet either uh, the environment, to meet the government, mostly the stockholders or my owners or investors. So they're satisfied with my performance because they're investing in my operation. So uh, examples, two million sales, goal or a uh, 3% pro uh, plan profit. Either one, those are good goals and how do I make sure I achieve it to that end? I'm gonna lose 20 pounds. I don't wait till, uh, till uh, the end of the year to say I lost 20 pounds. I look every year, uh, every month, uh, you know, weekly, they're gonna look, okay, you're losing two pounds, one pound, you're doing good. You don't want to do drastic changes, but you don't want, you want it moderately because it's still a, a, a health issue, okay? All right, so then the next one, you're looking at penetration goal. Penetrate measures performance. A uh, 4% penetration may mean the store has generated 4% of sales of all the chain. So I'm looking at penetration as how much, how many more products or pro, uh, my products or my goods I could sell in a market. Some markets I'm saturated. It's already saturated. So so many people can have color TV, boom, are saturated. Let's, I'll, I'll look at that roofing. It's real easy. If you see everyone in the neighborhood, all new roofing, you're not going to sell any more roofs. Because if they got brand new roofs, they got the good for 10, 15 years uh, guaranteed. You're stuck with the roof. That area is saturated roof. I got to find another market. But if I have a lot of openings or different markets that aren't you, to, you know, my needs, I got customers out there, I want to increase my penetration or take over someone else. You see Verizon doing that. You see Sprint's doing all kind of uh, ads saying, uh, we'll buy your, um, uh, uh, your contract out. Because they want to increase the growth. They're not worried about making profit right now. They want to increase the growth. Once they have more members, more members will help to the interest structure more members will help me buy more equipment and as they grow I'll level out over uh, over the long time but my whole goal for let's say I'm just using an example experiment is expansion penetration okay so how do I do that and here's the internal stand oh, I didn't need that 
sorry, I had a, a discount. Okay, so here's the internal standards. Internals come from within a, com a company. Externals are from outside. You know, it could be a uh, Wall Street. It could be a stockholder. It could be other competitors. Something's out there that's looking at it. Okay, so now when I look at industry standards, it's a form of external standards. Here's the industry it's going to say. Here's the standard that you should have for this production. Here's you know, the standard that this equipment should be uh, utilized. Here's the standard for a, a typical uh, a boutique. Here's uh, per square foot you should be generating so much uh, dollars per square foot of your uh, interior inter interior uh, uh, floor space okay so all those are standards set by the industry so it gives me the goals how do i know i'm overweight here's the standard your age and i show that because i am trying to lose weight i found out it's easier to buy larger clothes when people say oh george you're doing good it's good for a morale booster uh, just kidding uh, 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 all right so remember but those are goals there's a standard what is the standard i had to go with the standard but i say hey i'm a middle age i kind of like this standard I'd be a little bit on the uh, plus side because it makes me uh, i just feel more comfortable that way plus i don't have to buy all the clothes but i'm still measuring myself against the standard what's the uh, kind of glasses i don't look too geeky i want to look more modern so this style is out the new styles are larger what's the new standard what's the standard for this business okay so the industry standards gives me the standards for the quality gives me standards for the quality and here's the national retail federation let me go i got publishes annual standards for department and specialty store here's the main site i just go on there so you know I'll see if it works okay do i have it in here and I think you have to pay for it. No, here, the top retailer. So you see the list of who the top retailers are. All right, so if I'm looking at this, uh, it's looking at uh, uh, shops, a uh, reading list, uh, uh, DV uh, Savvy helps to revitalize publicity. Uh, now's the time to push Congress to act on what? Uh, some of the passes normal seem to be disappear. Do, you know, uh, retail trends, power plays, uh, what's leading brands. Let's see what they, they give you something. Uh, Okay, what do they have? Retail trends. Uh, uh, continuous billboards. So you got billboards, tracking retail trends. Uh, uh, com uh, commerce enabled uh, uh, video. Okay, different things. Text and buy. Let's see what they have on here. I'm just looking. I want you to look at these sites. They're in here. Uh, Nordstrom is making it simple to receive text about item and buy it immediately. Send it. So they, look, look what they're doing. They're trying to get you spontaneous. The, 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 this is excellent class. I'm so excited. Uh, retail merchandising. The whole thing when you look at point when you go in a retail store, you have things when you're waiting in a checkout line that people buy by. Uh, oh, I just need that. You know, you know what I mean? It's it, available. I'm looking at it. it. It's convenient right there, and try to persuade them on the way out. What are they doing now? They know you're looking for a certain thing. You could put it on your wish list, or you've looked at something, and now they're gonna say, "Hey, we got this thing on sale," because you're using the internet, and they'll tell text you right away hey we got a one day sale come on in buy it right now 20 percent to get you that spontaneous response to buying before you realize what the hell did i just buy i'm a retail merchandiser minus to move product use technology okay so now you know the trend so now you got to have an app in the business now go on there okay so look at that so that's a good site for you to look at the uh, what's the national federation what's the trends okay now control and objectivity the next one, let me close this one, so standards industry. You have two types of controls, qualitative controls, uh, measure performed subjectively with no opinions. So people like my product, you like the design. How do you do it? Oh, it really, uh, oh, it, it's very artistic. Oh, it, 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 it's awesome, oh, it's gross, it's whatever. Those are our subjective. So you have to, when you're looking at, you look at a customer base, get an average. Some are going to like it, some don't. But majority of people say that's really nice, that's very uh, professional. Oh, it made me buy the product. That's what I want to hear. So those are, you know, qualitative controls are there. Those are your surveys. Those are your opinion, uh, opinions, for lack of better words. Okay. Buyers performance to get to know their associates. Okay. Uh, important. Supply of the knee high is low. Okay, so when I'm looking at it, just uh, those are uh, qualitative. So just telling me it's low. That's not going to tell me quantitative. It's just why is it low? It's because people don't like uh, the high knee highs. They, they like the shorter ones because they want to look like uh, an elderly person with the uh, with the longer side. I'm just making this up, or it could be. I don't know. But that's just some somebody's uh, uh, opinion. 
no rhyme or reason, but I have to be able to say, okay, now I could drop it because they're not going to buy it. There's nothing wrong with the quality, nothing else. You just don't like the style. It's out, of, it's out of fashion. It's still the style is there. Okay? Now, quantitative. Quantitative measures objective. Numerous. Numer, uh, numerous. Uh, uh, numbers. Numbers. Uh, uh, so what I'm looking at quantitative is taking numbers. Did I sell so much? What's my percentage of sales? Those are all numbers, even though they're in a ratio. Numbers don't lie. It's But what I put in the numbers, if I put in the wrong numbers or it's tagging the wrong information or putting it in the wrong category, then my uh, report's going to be skewed. That's why accounting is so detailed. Because, you know, the creative individual is so rigid, but it has to be because telling me, here's what's my inventory. Not I think I got 20 pieces. I have to have 20 pieces because that's what my inventory is. You know, I got to collect, I got to pay. Remember inventory? When I'm looking in accounting, is, is double entry. Here's my inventory. And when I sell it, then here's uh, the, the other entry. So those two should be the uh, same amount when I'm looking at it. You know, my cost of goods sold and you know now what I uh, and and then uh, my uh, revenue or my sales a little different you know what's my profit margin but I have to know where the inventory goes uh, and those are numbers they don't lie they're either there or they're not there even though I come in on a spot the computer says I've got 20 in stock and in reality I only have 10 I've got a shortage problem is it a theft problem or is it just somebody's just uh, uh, somebody tagged the wrong things or they're not putting the right code in or it hasn't been coded right and uh, so another area is overstock I got remember I got the more goods coming in than I had in inventory that's what we report to say wait a minute there's where my problem is I'm high here I'm over uh, uh, build here but under build here and I could make the adjustments through accounting so everything else is uh, balancing it. I wouldn't know that if it wasn't for my controls. Remember to quantitative. Qualitative is subjective. What do people think about my product? Those are that's all fashion. When you look at marketing, this is a marketing class, uh, retail merchandising. Marketing is all perception. If I could tell you, you, you put on this shirt and it's going to be attractive, it's going to get you a raise, it's going to be you look professional, and and I plant those seeds in your mind, even though your shirt's hanging out and you know you you didn't tuck it in. It's not the shirt that doesn't make you professional. It's how you wear it, how you act. But in my mind, I think I'm professional. It works marketing perception that's my subjective that's my uh, 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 qualitative not my quantitative okay so now control intervals when I look at con the control intervals here's what we have on this one controls intervals at certain times do I want to have to report a every day look at the control uh, uh, continuous intervals when you're driving your car your speedometer tells you how fast you're going just because it's every day I'm getting over fast so I'm constantly looking at that do I want all this information about my inventory everything else coming at me at once a lot of reports how to read what they have is what they call the dash cam a lot of businesses small or large even a smaller one you could set it up through if you have a program or you have the vendor point of purchase or supplier could help you set up where it'll have the exceptional report or like the gas the, the dash cam is in your car what do I come in there I look at it it has all my things tells me my, uh, my you know if you got the uh, not the dummy lights that just pop up then you know you already have uh, an exception report but you have things that tells you if it's charging it tells you your gas fuel line it tells you your water pressure those are all continuous uh, dash cam you could have all these reports and they'll come in there and they'll give you here's your benchmark here's your goal and they'll tell you whether you're in there or you could have just like a warning you know uh, uh, you have to deposit or just uh, get you uh, something that'll notify you through email or your smartphone or whatever technology a bell or something that you have an exception report it's out of the norm remember that's what your dummy lights in your car work when that red light goes on and says you're overheating hmm, I wonder how much time we got you don't have much time it's already past that time pull over cool it down or if it says out of oil you know the only ones out of gas you know you got like the, uh, one gallon so you know it depends how many gallons you have you know and then even converts it for you one gallon you got 20 miles get a gas uh, get filled up or you'll be run out of gas Remember, those will give you some warning. That means your safety stocks are down. You could set that up. 
okay? So how do I establish the control? The first thing is what do I want to measure and what do I want to have controlled? Okay, at specific time intervals, remember you have continuous, so I want it quarterly, I want it weekly, hourly, uh, monthly, depending on your process, depending how important you want it. Usually you want your sales. If you, uh, most people uh, uh, will look at their sales, they kind of know in the morning it's going to slow, noon you're going to be peak out, and then the evening. So if their sales hasn't reached a certain goal by uh, 2 o'clock to start bringing out other stuff or, or looking how do I get customers to come in, they may start having a bonus uh, sale or they may bring some of their low inventory and, and put it on promotion. Hey, just to stimulate to bring that thing up so that you remember it's uh, 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 like a speedometer I should be driving uh, uh, 50 miles an hour doing 40 how do I bring it back up so I get there at the right time you know and if I figure that it's gonna take me 50 miles an hour one hour so that's it but if I'm gonna do 20 miles an hour I'm gonna be I'm not gonna make my goal if they're at an hour I gotta bring it up and it's the same thing we look at controls what do I need control? You control it. You can have controls for everything, but I don't look at all the controls. I've got my, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, fire alarm. I just check that it works. Hopefully it works for the goals to get out. I have other controls tell me my carbon monoxide. You know, it tells me the level of what it is. It's not, the, your air conditioning is a control. Remember? You establish, I want to add this one, it turns off, turns on. That's what your uh, uh, intervals, at what level, okay? Now frequency of control, how often? Or significant of deviation from standard and that's where you could have an exceptional how f how much something that never has any problems yeah okay i'll just have it and uh give me the report monthly or uh, just to see if i'm there it may be something a minor thing that doesn't make any difference you know my maintenance or uh, uh that they're doing it on time or, or something very irrelevant i'm trying to find something very you know something small that i don't want to report my okay my telephone calls you know i'm uh, unlimited uh, okay just give me when i go over or if i'm in the things i don't have to bother because never call that much but i'll look at it at the monthly end to see how close i am well i got a lot of time so that means i could use maybe i'm not utilizing an asset effectively so maybe i could sell it or reduce something maybe that's what you're looking on that but how often do i get it okay some controls involve multiple time interval fast turning intervals right need control shorter intervals you know something that's moving quickly to maintain inventory and avoid stock outs my main things that are moving or what we call in marketing my cash cows this is just moving the product the rest of them I, uh, they're moving but not at a different level but i charge them higher because i can keep it longer and it's an item that they actually have to uh, maybe down the road but here's what's here is my signature product when people come in there if it's an underwear if it's certain jeans whatever that's my signature and i've always had enough of that so those i want to make sure i never run out if i'm a hot dogs uh, uh, of uh, merchandisers or selling hot dogs to vendors i gotta always have that milk is one thing in store people always come from milk i'm out of milk they're upset you know they're built milk to buy bread everything else i gotta have those staples because that's what brings people in and they expect me to always have that so that's a faster turnover because people are buying it quicker and I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I don't need stock outs, okay? And then again, if I get overturned because uh, you know, I'm not moving it, then I got to uh, uh, reduce the price to get rid of it because I got new inventory coming in. Okay, sales are often computed by week. You look at your weekly, monthly, season, or year. Or they always compile. I look at the week, a salesperson, how much sales at a store? How much did I make this week? Because remember, I have to make my monthly bills. So I got them to this week was slow. I got hopefully next week will pick up. If not, how do I stimulate? Look at it as a fire. Here's your sale. It's a little fire. Those of you are campers. It's burning and the fire goes down. But I want the fire all night long. I got to add something, more wood. Not gasoline for Chicago people. My wife drives me nuts. So it's good. Dad, you, I get it going. I'm doing environmentally safe now. I'm using uh, all my shredding paper. I'm in an unincorporated area where they still let us burn leaves. So I may have a wood, you know, a, a little fire camp at nighttime. It's kind of nice, you know, cozy, warm with my grandson. All right. I just turn that in. But so what happens when the fire goes down? Most of us have been camping. When it goes down, how do I bring it up? I turn up. Same thing. You're boiling something. The water's not there. I turn it down. It's boiling too much. Slow down. So the sales are often, uh, you know, so each week I have to know, have I reached my sales goal? Have I reached that for the month? As a manager or owner of the store, you have to, uh, and that's the report. Otherwise, okay, so I miss this month. Next month, if I miss two months, I'm never going to make my goals. I'm going to be losing. I'm going to fall behind. I'll have cash flow problem. I don't have credit. You see, so you have to look at your uh, 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 weekly, monthly. You could be daily. Those on a diet, you watch your calories every day because you could 
I don't want to say the word pig out, but you do it. I, I need that. And then tomorrow I do that, and all of a sudden my weight goes down. My weight goes up and down. Cause why? Because I'm watching it. Sometimes I know I'm overeating. I want to look. I don't want to make myself bad. But in my heart, I already know. But I still check it. Oh, it's not too bad. You can't just go by intuition. The report, the numbers are there. That's what you use in business. Intuition just says, man, I didn't sell anything. How am I doing a report? I'm not making it. But if you don't see any customers in your, uh, you know, it's just indicators. Remember, you've learned all this, you know all this. A lot of times you already know about before. The report just justifies it. And it, now the report just tells you which area. If the sales are slow, other areas may be picking up. The other ones are slow. Okay, so I can't stimulate that. How do I get this area here to expand it more to offset this? Because maybe this one is one that I'm going to be dropping that product line. That's another good indicator. So I'm planning ahead now so at the year end my overall merchandising profitability sustainability all my product lines are achieved and you do that through reporting to and you know and setting up certain control are established at the same organizational levels as plans right you know i'm going to increase uh, sales by two percent so all my controls will have to have that how do i get to that point you know i'm going to lose 20 pounds 40 pounds a year end how do i get that every month i should be losing this much Sales and inventory are controlled by categories. We talked about that, the hierarchy. I'm trying to have a department and division. Remember, that's what we talked earlier, different formatting, how the stores are set up. And now when you look at this, now each one has, you know, so you have uh, controls for uh, the category, for the department, for the division at different levels. It just uh, aggregates back inside and comes up. Remember, your uh, organizational uh, goals start from the top trickle down every department does a little and it comes back up builds back up same way with the control level and then the regional your manager's looking towards your sales are down compared to the other offices then i call the office hey what's going on well we've got this or this or i could say my office i got route 12 they're working on it the traffic's there people are avoiding it okay so they'll accept that so they tell the other offices especially if it's a regional you got to pick up sales because george is hurting because i as a region i have to make my goals George can't do it. There's nothing he could do it. He could bring it in. There's nothing he could do it. Let's uh, shift some of the inventory to the other stores. I don't have to buy new inventory. I'm moving from one to the other. I'm a regional manager. So I'm a set, do, you, do you see how you're working? And it helps me uh, as, a, as, a, as a small, uh, uh, as, a, as a, a business unit, separate business unit, to get rid of my inventory so I don't get stuck with it. And then basically it's the organization. Remember, we start, controls, from category work up how do i move it where do i move it someplace else that's selling you know why reorder from the manufacturer when i have stuff here and that's where your warehouses come in i'm just to throw this in when you look at your warehouses and i'll throw this in on controls best buy for lack of words you used to have all, everything i could go in there on the refrigerator they go in the back they load it on my trailer or if i got a pickup truck or something you know and they'll deliver now they don't their stores are smaller they have the equipment everything else is central uh warehouse why it makes it different because if one store is selling more, I just send it there. I control my inventory better this way, and uh, you know. And then if it's out of sale, the only time you could ever buy something from the store is on the shelf or uh, in the display. They'll take it out, they'll load it up, they'll wrap it up, and you know, give you a discount on that. But they don't carry any inventory. What did I just do? I have one central location. I tell the customers, we'll deliver it to you because if I take it on a trailer, I lose it. Hey, that's the way I got it. And a lot of times they'll return it. Uh, you know they're upset so this way they'll deliver it they'll bring it to install it they make sure it's in your house installed properly and, and everything else and that return amount because the numbers showed me to control i get so many people returning stuff that they picked up because they were doing their own delivery it was costing me more because i can't sell it as new anymore it's dented and your customer had to complain to the manager or the regional i had to give them back a credit pal whatever you know you know all right I reduce that amount, increase customer satisfaction, and I'm there. And now my store space, I sell more products. I don't need the inventory, the warehouse back there, because I don't carry any of those things. I'm not talking about the small items. They still have some inventory. I'm talking about the big items that why should I carry them? Distribution, bring it out. The small items, you still have it. Do you see how I did my footprint? The storage is smaller. I'm more effective, more efficient. Customer satisfaction, all that I learned through different controls or different reporting at the regional and they say how we could do it. How do we reduce that number? Creativity, you know, remember when you're in fashion merchandise, you're creative by design, by fashion, but utilize the same skill set, your creativity. I may not know how to draw or be fashionable, but I know how to move products, how to get that money and get every dollar of my inventory 
that says maximum return on my investment. I'm beginning to talk like a business person. You know, that's what you do. I'm a creative person, but I'm using the business terms. Okay? Uh, district manager stores daily. Regional manager uh, uh, looks at it weekly. District uh, manager manages stores daily to make sure which store is up and down, what's going on. Could I adjust it? Remember, he's responsible. That's his bonuses. Each one got bonuses going to the goal. You don't get a bonus if you don't get to make a profit. Okay, so in the next one, we're going to talk about different reports. Uh, show the status of sales. I'm looking at this one, and this is what it looks like. You know, this is a copy. The book is a little bit clearer. Checklist for reviewing problem department. Percentage of stocks appropriate to percent of sales. Everything we're talking. So people are talking your percentage. Here's my percent. You don't know which item. I'm not looking at this item. I'm looking at percent, a category. Here's my shirt, my uh, clothing line. My dresses aren't selling. You know, I don't know which ones. What do I move? Okay, where will it come from? Analyze the sale classification, basic merchandise, fill in every uh, every size, color size, which sizes are moving, which are not. Maybe they're down because I'm out of size. It's a common size. I'm in an area where there's more tall people. Do you know these? So I, I, I got to have the tall uh, sizes. I'm in an area where they got more short people like myself so i make sure my clothing line i've got this few tiles but most of my majority of things are you know uh, for a person five eight five nine if i'm in an area where there are five six or more plus size women or more plus size men i need the larger sizes and the larger sizes are going this are my sales i got all the small stuff so i'm doing the percentage which area then i look at the report i i zero in i'm trying to really look this is a retail this is where at the end We've done all this. Your mind is going to spinning. You have to be know this to be successful in the retail merchandising. Forget the accounting part. That's putting it in. This is just every day. These are reports tell me which areas could to sell. I don't have to worry how they gave it. You know, what's the numbers are there? What's my benchmark? They're indicators, just like by uh, Bilesburg Gallon or by uh, uh, gasoline, uh, you know, fuel tank. Do I have enough take? Okay, so I, I close that off. Okay, so the next one, inventory profitability of stores, merchandising. Okay, a lot of reports are generated by computers. Made this task faster and easier. I used to have, when you look at it, a bad, a management used to have a bigger staff. Those of you taking me for management. Management numbers have uh, shrunk it down. People said there's no jobs in management. If you know how to deal with people, they are jobs. The hardest thing in management is people. Not reading the reports. So it used to be before, they used to have individuals that would run the reports for me as a manager. I, I, don't know, I want this report. You know, that's their whole job. I had a big s group of individuals just read reports. Technology now makes it easier. You have access. That's a pro those of you who are taking the college level, make sure you take access. It's just a database that tells me some of the information. You have reports uh, uh, that are generated by point of it, uh, by uh, a point of purchase. You have reports generated from a computer system, QuickBooks reports, I have inventory reports. All this is central to any retail merchandising. You have too much stuff out there to do it manually. Manage your people, manage your customers, do the, the reports make my life easier. So it makes it easier. Yields reports and buyers rely, but make sure you have the report that gives you the information you want. If I got all this stuff, I don't need all the, I only need this. You could, I, you could customize those reports. They're very easy. Here's what I want. You know, that's why technology, I don't have to know how to, uh, 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 create the report. I want this, 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 and I want to look at look, look at a report. If you look at it, uh, and I'm just going to try it in real simplistic, so you know how they use it, even to help the customer. I'm buying a a, a a new phone, so I'm looking at the Apple, you know, the uh, iPhone. I'm looking at the Samsung and HTC. You know, I like those. I, I've used all three. They're all good. I, I just want to see which one's got the best uh, 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 gadget. How do I do it? I can look at it, read it. I say compare. That's a report. Boom, boom. I got all three, and I see which one does what. Now take that with numbers. I mean, looking at your, uh, uh, what do you call it, your ratios, your turnover, and I have the reports of my product lines. I could see that visually. It makes it easier than looking at it and try to compare it. That's what you report. That's data, and the reports put it in the simplified manner so if i just want to look at this i click 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 on these phones and same with reports i want to look at the uh, sales to inventory i want to look at stock to inventory whatever i could do that way with a report and i don't have to be a programmer because they're already all pre-programmed all right so we have that now exceptional reports let's get into this exceptional report uh can be uh just too many reports remember i got too much stuff to report 
like my gauge. I got all these gauge. I just want the ones flashing. When I'm driving, pure speed limit. You're going too fast. You're flashing. These may include, uh, uh, these include only major deviations or discrepancies, both favorable or not. Okay, now filtering out deviations. Within a 10%, so, you know, I don't want every report, so I'm going, uh, anything over 10%, call me. If my checking is over 10% below, call me. Over this dollar amount, notify me. Reduces the size of reports and the amount uh, of time needed to review it. You have a big report, it's going to take a 20, uh, you know, about a half an hour to, to uh, download, to keep it current. What do I only need? I don't need all that stuff. I just need this one thing that's the critical key for my, you know, your reports could be different for your daily, what I need, my daily reports could be different from my weekly reports, my monthly reports or combination of all, but now I could break it down. If I want to, I could go from the monthly and break it all the way down to that day to see where my problems are. Technology, love it or leave it, but you have no choice. Okay, now reports format. We're almost done. Uh, okay, reports formats. I'm looking at this. Varies from one organization to another, right? Uh, reports different uh, re related uh, to the format, frequency, application, level of information. Every company is a little different. So sometimes you may buy a, a CAD report for somebody else, or sometimes I'm, you look at somebody else's reports as a benchmark. And look what you want. Right? So. Oh, that makes sense. If you got somebody else from another uh, department, from another, uh, sometimes different department. We had this report, found it very useful. Well, we never heard about it in our department, so you could grow. That's why when you move managers around, they also have, you know, good managers. They'll know different reports and ask, hey, why don't we have this report, or let's create this report to improve in this area. But it's different from different stores, different operations, uh, different inventory, different merchandise you carry. Okay, the turnover report. Uh, okay, let me just put this one out here. Uh, I'll look at this. If I look at a turnover report, remember, this is my inventory. I'm looking at change in inventory. Here's the change, different stores. Okay, here's my inventory. Do, 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 do. The change in inventory tells me the percentage. Negative, that's good or bad. My inventory is down. Uh, sales, good, good, good. Inventory is down, 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 sales, right? Uh, 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 change of sales. Oh, positive, so this is good. That tells me I'm selling more inventory. Then my sales went up positive. Come on, that's good, but I gotta make sure I don't have any shortages. So the ones that aren't selling, I'll, like this, right? This one sells down. Let's move some of the inventory here. Do you see how the report does from a regional manager? Okay, so, okay, shows how quickly uh, a good sell, that's my goals. Sales increase with stock increases producing the same turnover, you know, if it's consistent. So if I know what my turnover rate is compared to how many people buy within that period, I don't have to worry about stocks because my sales are replenishing. It's like a flow of water coming in. You know, I, I've got a, a flow. I don't look at a toilet. I'm going to put it in the toilet. Anyway, it's done anything else. And your float sticks, the water just keeps on running, running, running out. But if that float keeps it, when to turn it off, when to turn it on. So if I know my sales is consistent, my concern not all some are going to have its peaks but some consistent then i know my inventory could supply it but those that are going up i have to make sure i find that supply so as a manager hey i'm running out here the manufacturer says yeah i could give it to you i could rush in order it's going to cost me so much i have a store that's slow maybe i'll pick up later i'll move that goods there internally or bring it in here to satisfy this customer base and then later order on the regular time without paying that additional rush cost because otherwise i get stuck or if i think i ask a manager you think it's going to go down no nah, no it's just the market's just going people are losing a lot of jobs in this area fine i'll take it out and i'll reduce his goal for that year i'll modify them and increase this other store's goal but overall my goals at the region still meet the corporate goals I'm talking like a manager, but that's how you have to start thinking, or a business owner. You got two stores. Which ones, you know, I don't need to bring it in here. Let's, let's move the goods around, okay? And sales increase with less stock producing, higher stock over with a higher gross margin, right? I increase my sales and less stock producing because I'm getting rid of the inventory. It's moving. I want to have just in time, but not in the, you know, once you lose, the, remember, in retail merchandising, you cannot, or in man, same thing in fact, you don't have a certain item, you can't make the product. You don't have a certain item, people are going to my competitors or they're not coming back. They're going to be upset. What type? Yes, all the types. I'm tired of finding another store. All right? Okay, so that took care of my reports. Uh, stock to ratio, here's a pick. 
I would look at the stock again. I would look at the sales ratios. Here's my numbers. Remember how many turnovers? You know, uh, just in April. So I'm looking at which ones are low, which ones are high, and uh, how do I make my adjustments? So what does it tell me? Uh, uh, include sales and end of the month. Uh, end of the month, the penetration. And stock to sales ratios. Inventory and stock penetration should balance. And here's an example of the you know, monthly report for five uh, uh, accessory uh, push cards. It gives me information. I'm just I'm going with this real quickly. Already look at the report. You don't understand. Look, which reports make sense for your business? Those are the reports you should know it inside and out. If you don't know, it's not going to come. Oh, geez, what does it mean? Look at it. Where are the numbers? How did they get it? Use your man. Once you understand it, I can't just. I can tell you what it does. Once you understand it, then you could just look at the report real quickly you know there's a deviation you know i could look at my uh, gauge if i didn't know uh, that if it's in a negative that means it's discharging pretty soon on my car it's not going to be able to start i want in the positive it's over too uh, much what the heck is going it's really charging too much going to blow up the battery remember but i understand what that gauge means that's all my report this is a gauge what's going on out there that i may not pick up with my vision or uh, uh, by walking and being in the store some of the stuff i could uh, i could pick up other stuff is there is happening look when termites are eating up your foundation you don't see them till the house crumbles but if you see one termite you know what the heck and somebody finds out oh my god there's a whole bunch of them then you take care of it before it crumbles that's what your reports are doing that's what your controls are doing that's what you're looking at it make sure you get it before your business crumbles or your inventory is short or you're got to catch up to get your uh, business back on track easier to Fix it before they come, before it gets loud. Uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 like I said, termites are the bees. Make all you see one, all of a sudden there's a thousand. Before you know it, they eat up your foundation. Same thing with your report. You want to uh, get it quickly, okay? So report in the 50 merchandise category, stock to sales ratios. And here's a pick. I think I already had this. November. Here's my change of sales, right? My ranking. They rank it so you know the number one is the best, right? Uh, and here's uh, uh, last year. You, you see, this report has everything I want, depending on the stores, and I could see which one is better. I could now I could go in here. This is just one. I could click on here, and I could just do everything by ranking. So I got the stores, or I want to see which is my highest sales. You could change the numbers. You see what I mean by clicking on a report on that header? It'll just turn it in. I want it uh, by the highest or lowest, and it'll change all this. It's easier. It's not like oh, how do I find it? What is important? And then once I get into it in the computer, I could download it and start looking at other reports and find out where my problem is. Or were my, uh, uh, what am I doing right? No, I don't want to be negative. Okay, so we have that. Inventory position. Here's the pick. Here's my inventory. My storage department, uh, you know, Crossway Village. And it tells me, let's see what the heck does it tell me. It tells me uh, uh, beginning of the month uh, uh, inventory, my receipt, my sales, my end of the month uh, act is my uh, what I was shooting for. Here's my plan. Okay. And here's my, uh, you know, stock to sales and stock to sales by. So you have all the, and look, I have all my information here. And this is the one we talked about, Mon uh, Monkey Pumpkins. That was about a few chapters back where we talked about the, uh, uh, they did a uh, cloning line, small business expanding, where they want to expand. So now he has stuff out of the stores, and I'm still uh, privately owned. I'm watching. Okay, which ones are doing? What's happening now? What's going on in this market? Remember, I got different market, different customer, and I adjust. So I may have to have different categories or different goods that sell here but don't sell here but I try to try them out hey they may sell here I don't know if not I give them back to them using your material using your inventory using your reforce, uh, resources effectively that's what the reports are going to do and this way when you have to go when your creditors are looking your investors are coming in they're looking at your reports you can show them hey look at my sales to inventory here's my percentage here's my report wow this guy or this gal not only knows their merchandise whether they're creative or fashion, they also know the management. Let's invest more because I can see they know they don't waste money. They make money on money. That's what investors want to hear. That's what I want to hear. Okay? So you got your inventory. You know, just showing you some of the reports. Vendor reports. So you look at it. Here's your vendor, different vendors. Which ones are selling to, to, uh, for me? Which ones aren't? You know, uh, all right, my yearly time. Okay? So cosmetic sales by vendor for the department. 
uh, permits comparing uh, sales from last year's penetration for last year at this year's month season years to date and depends what you want on the report remember you control the report once I set it up this is the template boom I just have this report you know if you're not sure somebody in there IT could help you set up the report or, so, or accounting will set up the report they want you to use it because if you're successful the rest of your organization is successful if your salespeople know how much they're making their percentage if they're getting their profits they're getting their bonuses they're going to sell more if the store knows they're selling more, they're going to be more uh, 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 active within the operation because it, it depends on their bonuses, their raises. Right. Give the information down. The computers trickle it down. You know, they don't have to know what my burning costs. They just have to know what they need. So they just have access to how a uh, 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 bonus they're making. So they gets them motivated. It keeps them motivated. Okay, style status. If I look at style status, what kind of styles? You know, different styles. Okay, so it's got different, you know, uh, different plazas, and they're looking at different styles. So they already have their styles on here. I got an example: a weekly report uh, for ten off price men's stores uh, contains specific style numbers or units received. You remember, this doesn't make any difference unless you know what those numbers are. And these are more of your core. When I said this is the core, here's the styles that I'm monitoring because this is what keeps my business pace, my sustainability. Or I could be monitoring a new style, a new vendor, and I'm watching. Is that style, does that make sense? Is it a fashion? You know, Remember, style is not a fashion yet. Some styles become fashion, as we said. It's always in style, but it's in fashion. I'm trying to throw that in so it's you... So you'll remember that at the end. So if you take uh, another instructor and you talk about that, oh, yeah, that's the right style, but this is in fashion. You know, so it means style. If it's in fashion, it means the style's in fashion. Okay, so let's see. Weekly reports, so we have that. Da, da, da. Average sales and units among that. Okay, so we have that. And last one is category. The easiest one, if I look at it, I'm looking at my different categories, uh, casual category, special occasion, suits. You know, categories, I got a lot of stuff in there. Is this category uh, selling? Because remember, the category is like a signature. What are the people coming in? They're coming in for uh, career. And if, uh, that's where most of my sales are in career. And all of a sudden, business is slow. So casual picks up. Oh, geez. Maybe I should more uh, focus more on my casual. Don't get rid of the career. Maintain it. But maybe the clientele is changing. You know, you only need so many suits. So now I, uh, so but the casual is picking up. In different times of the month. I got a I had more casual inventory here. Now it's more in the winter time. Uh, of my business or career, you know, uh, graduation, people going to the job. Remember, you're looking at categories and you're trying to adjust which one's going up, which one. So you have the right inventory. You have the right promotional. You're going in the right direction. Okay, that took care of my reports. This is not too bad. Okay, what have we seen? I'm going to do this at the end. We uh, control is monitoring or measuring actual performance. This is just an overview. Everything you know. This is your main vocabulary. Okay, it's a little different than this one. Okay, measuring actual performance as it relates to establishing goals and standards. Quick and dirty. A control standard is a reference point or a benchmark. Boom, used to measure performance. All right. A deviation. What's a deviation? Discrepancies, right? Discrepancies uh, between actual performance and standard. Remember, I had a lot of information. What's a deviation? It's a discrepancy before that. Real quickly, okay? Uh, qualitative control are subjective. Remember, it's my feeling. Touchy, you know, it's hard to measure. It's not really hard to measure. It's more of an opinion there. You just have to have, it's a little more costly. Quantitative is easy because the computer, you just sell so much or didn't. They're very objective. You remember when you do your paper, you have two portions. You're gonna to have to do so many words, you know, uh, the uh, 35 concepts out of uh, for your retail merchandising uh, project. Uh, uh, I think it's the team is 3,000 or 4,500 words, about eight, ten pages. Those are all quantitative. How you you know uh, uh, concepts, everything else, what you say about your store, how you position your writing style. That's all subjective. So most of your points are in the quantitative. It's easy for me, the objective part, but the subjective doesn't make sense, okay? Control levels, parallel planning, right? Here's my goals. A report is what? What is a report? I get stuck here. There we go. Uh, just a little thing. Uh, almost at the end, and we, I think that I have a lot of programs. Wait, wait a second. We're waiting, waiting, waiting. If not, we'll be done in a second. Okay, we're backed off, okay? I just kind of put it on pause. Okay, so we've seen everything else here. Report. Okay, so we got what a report was, uh, 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 contemplation of uh, 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 timely information. Remember, 
not data. It has to be timely, and then you set up the time. When do I want the report? Meaningful form. Most controls are generated by computers. We want that electronically transmitted, processed, and stored in a timely fashion, reliability and effective. You know, and I, and I could even have the smartphone. I could have it daily. I have a dash cam so I know, hey, uh, you're uh, below your uh, target market. And I do that when, uh, you know, you're checking account. You want below to make sure you have money in there. Okay, uh, uh, exception, you know, that's when you get the text messages. Uh, you're below uh, your... Uh, uh, amount that you want it in there. I know someone's using the cash. and I, I fell below what I call my safety stock. Okay, exception reports include major deviation from standards, bypassing the minor ones. I don't read everything. To, I'm just what I'm looking for. I'm just looking at either, is my battery charging? Am I overheating? Do I need all those? You know, because if you look at your computer, when you take your car and they could put on a computer that tells you everything, everything, every switch is doing. I don't need that. They just give you exception: overheating, out of gas, a uh, uh, low, uh, uh, your battery's low, or whatever. Okay. All right. So what are we done? We have done it. We're at chapter fifteen. Woo! Almost finished. One more chapter with me. So today we took everything we did. The last five chapters was accounting, financing, uh, uh, pricing, uh, inventory, cost. All that is part of the business. And that's the good part because when you see that money, you see those reports, you see your number going up because your product is selling, your store is selling because of your creativity, because of your uh, a knowledge of retail merchandising, makes you feel good. That intrinsic, remember uh, when you're taking me for a uh, 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 management or a uh, business organization or motivation, that intrinsic, I feel good as a manager. Man, you know, I used to be the highest out of the, uh, the department was the highest numbers with the lowest amount. We, we, we maximized everything and the highest uh, generating numbers. That's a good thing to be up on top. But if you're on top, you sometimes fall down. People are looking at you. They want you for guidance. So if you're at that part, that's how you move along. Even if you're a business, your own business, you're making money. You feel good. The business is doing well because you understand the whole system. You understand what's going on. You're just not a robot, a person out there. So you have to know the dollars, remember. Don't worry about the accounting, it's the information, the rest of it. How much do I charge? What's my inventory? How much do I bring it in? What's my customers? How, well, how do I move product? And all that is true, your reporting, everything you learn. So take one report at a time, the reports that mean something to you. You get all the reports, don't utilize them. Take those, and now you know how to control it. Remember, you look at that, you know where to place your efforts to bring it back on course. So you're going forward. Again, my name is Dr. George Machaki. Today we covered Chapter 15, which is in Retail Merchandising, uh, uh, Controls and Reports Analysis. And I'll see you in Chapter 16 very shortly. And then that one's going to be more of how do I control the spacing, uh, different hangers, you know, uh, layout of the store as a capstone of this class. So now you know the inventory, you know which ones I should put, not just because it looks cute. If it's not selling cute, it doesn't do any good, they have to buy Okay, I'll talk to you in a little bit. Bye.